Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to today's session. Uh, this is Nellie Deutsch, and uh, really uh, is thrilling to be here today and to be able to talk to you about engaging online activities. So if you could just add in the chat box uh, where you're from, and if you have any questions, feel free to use the chat box as we go. The chat box is um, a way to chat uh, in class, something we can't do, and I keep saying this, in a face-to-face class or at a conference. You know, we have to sit and, well, we can move a little bit, and we have to pay attention or pretend, uh, you know, to be polite and so on. And online, we don't have to because nobody sees you. Nobody knows whether you're sleeping or watching or listening or eating or drinking your coffee or tea or having lunch or wherever you happen to be, uh, you could be anywhere. <laughs> so I think it's really exciting that we can connect like this for learning through the chat. And um, I don't think I would ever have been as uh, interested in teaching through a virtual class. And I've been teaching through a virtual class such as this one, even before WizIQ came into existence, since about 2004. I used different platforms. And the reason I loved it so much was because I could chat. <laughs> Would you believe it? You know, teachers can't shut up. So, uh, you know, it's great for us talkers to be able to uh, communicate through the chat. So we've got Albania, welcome. Hawaii, Susan. Every time you say Hawaii, I think, oh, really? Maybe I'll get there one day and uh, we'll shake hands. And we've got Peru and Quito. Hello, Maria. It's always a pleasure uh, and exciting. And I hope that we'll see you. We've got Thomas from Venezuela and Italy. Yay! Good to see you, Neves. And uh, let's see who else is here. Did I miss anyone? Well, people will be coming in, and uh, Lima, of course, and it's sunny. You're so lucky that it's sunny, and it's beautiful wherever you are. And there was a question that I added before the class started, and let me just share this for the YouTube people. Uh, the question, actually, I can't see it anymore. Uh, the question was, what would you like your students to do? And I don't think I, I published it. I apologize. All right, so there it is. I forgot to publish it. So the question is, uh, what would you like your students to be able to do? Now, I'm talking about from the heart, okay, seriously, uh, as a teacher. And if you're not a teacher, think of yourself as a student. What would you like to be able to do? in a course, in a class, uh, what would you like to be able to do? Or would you like your students to be able to do? And this time it's not a yes, no, so it's kind of a thinking question. Uh, there are a few options. Actually, there are, I think, nine options. And we'll be discussing all of them to some extent. And the options are collaborate, find themselves, create a video and or audio, do sports and or dance, create music, create art, and that's it. And if you have others, feel free to add them. Of course, it's big hugs, Susan, but I'm not allowed to say this online. It's like I tell my students, I'll hug you when you finish school, not while you're uh, in the establishment. Of course, hugs. You bet. And you should see people who meet for the first time after knowing each other online. The hugs just don't stop. It's a real thrill. Okay, so I'm going to share the results for now. And as people come in, 
they'll be prompted to take it. Okay, so let's take a look at the results. Seems to be that collaborate is the winner right now. Uh, next in line is find themselves, and the third is create a video and audio. Okay, so let's see how this goes on. I'm going to minimize it. You can minimize it too if it's in front of your face or simply um, click on the X. Okay, and if you can add where you're from, we've got, oh, nice. We've got uh, Portugal represented here and Romania is represented. And Harriet's here, yay, from Chicago. I hope it's not too cold there. Feel free to add the weather chit chat as we go. All right, so the question is, what would you like your students to be able to do? And we're going to be talking about MoveNote because MoveNote has a lot of the answers. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you've uh, tried MoveNote, just to get an idea here. I'm not gonna give you a poll. Just thumbs up or thumbs down. If you have done MoveNote. So Christina, this is about MoveNote, but not only. Okay, great, Teresa. Thomas, I am shocked. You have never done move note. You have to do a move note. What is a move note? Well, a mo it's fairly new. So if you don't know it, it's fairly new. It's not that old. Um, it's a program completely free where you get a chance to uh, use audio, video, and text. And we'll be talking about that as we go. All right, so everybody's gonna do this because uh, it's a requirement, you have to try it. All right, so what do we expect our students to do? How many of you follow Bloom's Taxonomy because you have no choice or because someone has, because you think it's important or whatever reason? Do you follow Bloom's Taxonomy? As a student, I hated him. Every time I saw that name, I would think, ooh, ooh. Um, as a young student, learning to be a teacher, I didn't like it, <laughs> okay. But Bloom's Taxonomy lives, and it has been around for many, many years. All right, good to see you, Didier. All right, so there is the pyramid. And of course, it goes from lower level skills to higher level skills, okay? And at the bottom, and this is very relevant to today's uh, uh, information and the fact that we've got so much of it. Well, first of all, it's knowledge, understanding, okay, whatever information you get, you, have to understand in some way how you apply it, your analysis of the information, okay, you synthesize it in order to create something, and then you evaluate. All right, pretty simple. Let's take a look at it in a more detailed way. Okay, it goes from, as I said, higher to lower. Okay, understanding factual information. All right, so uh, facts. And the way to see whether, if you want your students to be able to do this, you use these words, these verbs. So the way you write it is, by the end of the course, students will be able to define. Okay, we use these uh, expressions. And uh, let me get a uh, tool here to do this more effectively, perhaps. Okay, so we want them to define, to make a list, to state, to label, and so on. And then the next stage, the comprehension or understanding. So we write it like this. By the end of the course, students will be able to describe, explain, summarize, interpret, and illustrate. And then we go 
up the scale to uh, higher order thinking skills, application, you have to apply what you learn. And you say, by the end of the course, the students will be able to apply, to demonstrate, use, solve, predict, construct, and mod modify. Okay, in some cases, this is already going higher up. For some students, it's high. Okay, it's really, really high, but that's the, uh, the way Bloom has structured it. Next is analysis. Okay, this is already higher order thinking. Very high, in fact. You compare, you contrast, categorize, distinguish, and so on. And then you get to synthesis, where the information is adapted, synthesized, so that you can create something else with it. And the final stage that I don't really like, personally, I, I think that there's room to leave it out. I don't know if this is a higher order thinking skills, but it's at the top, is... By the end of the course, students should be able to judge, appraise, recommend, justify. This is the conclusion. So conclusion is kind of a higher order. Thank you, Thomas, for sharing that. Thinking skills. Okay, so you've got all these higher order going from the low to the high. Okay, and here they are. Okay, all of them together. So is this what you want your students to do by the end of the course? Give me a thumbs up if you are okay with this. This is okay. Okay, I should put down my thumb down because I don't think it's okay. Sorry. I don't think this is okay. In other words, I don't think of this. When I look at my students, I don't categorize them. I don't put them in boxes. I don't give them grades for being smart, stupid, and so on. In other words, I don't make them feel like whatever answer they give, well, that's not good enough. That's just, that's a lower. Okay, I don't really like the idea of evaluating students in this way out of the box. Exactly, Helena. This is in the box, very much in the box. You couldn't be more in the box if you were the box itself, all right? So when I ask you, what would you like your students to be able to do? Look at your students and you do this. Every teacher does it. You walk into class, you look at them and you say, okay, I have a lesson plan. I have added Bloom's taxonomy. Now, what do I want from them? All right? Create, exactly. That's the key. Create. Well, in order to create, you see, Bloom doesn't discuss any kind of social interactions. Okay, that's constructivism. That's perhaps uh, Vygotsky. But it certainly isn't Bloom. Okay? Um, so collaborate. You know, most of you mentioned collaborate. Today, well, maybe it, this was in the past too, but today we encourage our students to collaborate. Would you let your students do this in class? Would you let them do this? This is a conference room. It's a lecture hall. And yet, look what's going on. Yeah, Ariane, I agree with you about evaluation, but it's there. Yes. Oh, and cheat. Because yesterday's cheat is today's collaboration. Okay, well, we considered cheating in the past is now collaboration. So it's just a semantics. Um, I went into one of my classes. Well, I do this in most of my classes. I teach high school, so in grade 10, from grade 10 to 12, I ask them, I ask my students, okay, stand up if you have ever cheated on an exam. Everybody stood up, and I was standing too, of course. Okay, and then I said, okay, sit down and tell me about your experiences. How did you cheat? And they had such a wonderful time. I think that was highlight of the year sharing with others how they cheated and they I learned so much about cheating one of the ways the most popular way of cheating today 
if you don't know about this, is everybody does the exam together. They pass a page around the page test. Everybody does what they can. So the best students do, everybody does one question. So actually at the end of um, <laughs> the exam, every, the page has gone through and everyone has contributed to the test. Isn't that amazing? I was so impressed. But is that cheating? Okay, it is cheating because they're not allowed to do that. Otherwise, it would be collaborating. Exactly, Helena, that's right. But that's not the point. Okay, if we're talking about Bloom's lower level thinking skills, like def memorizing things, then yes, it's very difficult to stop collaborating. Next is record. What I want my students to be able to do is record themselves. I'm a language teacher, but this could go for any subject. Think of your students who find it very hard to write. Even math equations. Students can write the math equations and then they can explain how they got there. It's a lot easier to record yourself than to write. And you might say, well, aren't we supposed to develop writing skills? Of course we're supposed to develop writing skills. But what about the, the skill of speaking? What is wrong with speaking? Why aren't we developing ways of speaking? So recording is a wonderful way, and it's so much faster. Writing takes a long time. Okay, next is a video. Why not ask the students to create a video? We're talking about creating something. That's what I would like my students to do. Create a video. And here is a great way of creating a video. This is an amazing program called Video. And by the way, these are all clickable. So um, you can get the, um, I added the link to the PowerPoint presentation. I'll uh, share that again in case you missed it. I hope it comes through. No, it didn't come through. What came through is something else on my mouse. Wait, let me try again. At the top, maybe somebody else can have a better uh, chance. Let me try again. No, it's not going to work. Can you um, copy and paste the link to the PowerPoint presentation? It's at the very, very top. If you came in at the beginning, you should be able to do it. All right, if not, I'll try later. In any case, yeah, I think I have it. Yes, I do. I thought ahead without even knowing it. Okay, here we are. I got it. Okay, so here it is. There's the link to the power. Oh, thank you, Neves. <laughs> That's sweet. Okay. Uh, if you click on that, you'll be able to get the link. If you click on the image, you'll thank you, Maria. You'll be able to uh, get an amazing video a way to create video and it's a lot of fun and of course it's free. Okay, so this is something fairly new. Again, notice you can follow us, you can get feedback, sign up. It's, it's fun. Okay, so try it out. It's a way to create video. In addition, this is amazing. If you click on the image on the PowerPoint presentation, you'll be able to create music for free online. So I would like my students to be inspired and to be able to create music based on whatever they've learned. Okay, you can see that there's a keyboard here. It's amazing, it really is. You're gonna love it. Um, next, this, what do you think of this painting or picture or whatever, is this art? Give me a thumbs up if you think it's art, thumbs down if you think it's not. Feel free to uh, evaluate. This is a higher order thinking skill. Evaluate, <laughs> Thomas, you're nasty. All right. Well, you can create this for free. And if you go to the PowerPoint presentation and click on it, 
you'll have a chance to, and your students, of course, have a chance to create art. I created this, okay? And it is a piece of art because I consider myself an artist. You know, art is whatever the artist says it is. So if the artist thinks it's art, it's art. You see a math symbol in it? Really? Harriet, what do you see? Oh, I love drawing. But this is freehead. This is on the internet with your mouse, Helena. I think it's kind of difficult. Well, it was difficult for me. Yeah, I do like drawing, but uh, you, you can see some of my drawings in the background. Some of my stuff. I don't know if you can see that. There's a lot of stuff here. All right. So um, what image, Harriet? That's right, Neves. It's in the eyes of the beholder. <laughs> the blue banana. The blue banana. All right. So I would like my students to create art. I would also like my students to do sports. That's what I would like them to do at the end of the lesson. I would like them to be able to get together and come up with activities that involve physical movements. Yes, I, I think that physical movements are very important, especially to the students who are kinesthetic. They need movements and so on. So I would like them to be able to engage in sports. And most importantly, I would like them to be socially engaging in communication. So I would like them to do all these things and connect with people from around the globe. Because to connect face to face doesn't bring you to the other side of the world. But I would also like them to communicate among themselves and find things to talk about. And when I say communication, I mean reading, writing, speaking. Okay, all the skills. In addition, I would like my students to be able to dance. Yes. I would like them to stand up in the classroom and dance. You know, put music on and dance. And by the way, I did have a project on dancing from one of a team of students, and it was amazing. They came up with a dance. Why not? Okay, again, the physical, the emotional, the artistic dances in my your teaching. All right, so you students dance. So this is Helena's class where everybody dances. Ah, Harriet, you're going ahead. You're looking at the PowerPoint presentation. Right. This is the last one. Okay. The last one is to find themselves. Content is wonderful. Knowledge is great. But living with yourself is something that we don't teach our students. We're so focused on teaching to the test and on the textbooks that they have to buy because the school requires them to buy and so on that we forget that people need to survive with themselves. So finding themselves. I would like my students to find themselves. And when I say this, I don't mean any age whether they're high school students, college students, graduate students, adults, retired people, older people. You know, it doesn't stop. Exactly, Helena. It doesn't stop. Because we're constantly changing. And every change that happens to us requires that we find ourselves. Okay, so yes, go find yourself. That's what I would like my students to do. Go find yourself. Who am I? Where am I going? What am I here to do? And if you look at this maze, okay, I think it's very, it's a nice uh, caption. 
of going from the outer to the inner self. And Rita said, I don't think dancing in class is appropriate. Maybe it's acceptable outside class in an extra career. Sure, of course, of course. Just the hard dances. But it depends on your class. Okay, the class could be in, it doesn't have to be a small class. It could be in an auditorium. The class could be in a hotel, in the conference room. Okay, so when you think of class, what do you mean? Where is your class? How big is the class? Well, it could be outside too, definitely. All right, but I would like my students to dance somewhere. All right, and find out who they are. All right, so that's what I would like my students to do. Okay, and I asked you at the beginning, what you would like your students to do. And let's see if the polls have changed a bit. Yeah, it's still the same thing. It's collaborate. And now uh, create a video and audio is number two. And number three is find themselves. Okay, so um, we'll see how that goes. Move note. Well, what is move note? Well, it's moving. It certainly is moving. Is it about dancing? Well, it could be. But it is a combination of movement and note. In other words, it's video, video plus text. Okay, video and text, that's what it's all about. But it could also be text plus video. So what do you prefer? Okay, think about it. Do you prefer to have a text and then a video accompanied, or do you want to start with a video and add a text? What is your preference? Okay, so text plus video, video plus text. Video first, and then text. And some of you say text and video. All right, so everybody has their own preferences. Well, on Move Note, you can do both. Isn't that wonderful? You can do both. So it's up to you, and it's also up to your students, because I hope that your students will use Move Note and not only you as a teacher. So, how do we start with Move Note? First of all, Move Note is Move Note.com. I just wanted to mention that some people think that Move Note goes with Google, it doesn't. Move Note goes by itself. You don't need to have a Google account <laughs> for Move Note. Okay, it's not necessary. Uh, I'm getting a message that says connecting to streaming server. I ignore it, just uh, click on uh, the X. You are? Okay, I see everything's fine. Now it's just the, the system tries to equalize itself so that people who have slow connections, people who have faster connections, that everybody's equal. So that's why you're getting uh, the message. But can you hear me? Just let me know um, if the sound is okay. Yeah, don't worry about it. Nothing's going to explode. Nothing's going to happen. So, Lo Oh, I hope it's not too loud. If it's too loud, please let me know. I hate that <laughs> when it's too loud. All right, so first of all, we start. And somebody suggested last time, they said, Nelly, we, I learn best when you screen share. I don't know how you guys feel about this, but um, I am going to try and screen share. Let's see if I can do that because it asked me to update, and I haven't updated, but let's say it works. Okay. All right, so now I've allowed the Java so that I can screen share. You like it. Yeah, a lot of people said they like it, so I hope it works. If everything goes to the bottom left, just click on it and it'll pop back up. Okay, so I'd like to take you to, uh, 
move note. Okay, and I'm going to go through uh, this PowerPoint that I shared with you. Okay, so that, um, okay, there it is. Okay, okay, that's the PowerPoint. Okay, and I can go through here, but I'm not going to. So I am going to get another tab. I'm going to write move note. Move note. Okay, and that's all I do. You don't need to have a Google account. Okay, that's a misconception. There's move note. And um, I have an account, so you need to create an account. Once you create an account, okay, you can start with add a slide and then record yourself. Hello. Or you can do the opposite. You can upload a video from your system. Okay, I can click on this and upload a video and then add the slides. That's what I meant. You can go both ways. But I need to give it a name. And that's how easy it is. Okay, Move Note is super easy. It really does not have a learning curve, which I can't say for any of the other systems that I use. Okay, but Move Note is very, very intuitive. Nothing difficult about it. And that's it. So let's go back to, um, okay, let's go back, stop screen sharing. Okay, I hope you got that. Let me share again. You can't hear anything. Uh, let's see, why not? You're right, the sound left me. Okay, yeah, the sound sometimes goes down. Okay, you should be able to hear me now. Uh, let's try it again. The sound, the sound, the sound. Okay. Sound went down. Let me get the sound back. The sound disappeared. Okay, the sound keeps going down. Okay, the sound should be back. Yeah, some sound. Okay, I have to report this to Was IQ. If anything weird happens, feel free to not feel free. Please uh, contact support at WizIQ.com. Uh, WizIQ does an awesome job. If you have problems, they call you by phone. They help you with the audio and the video. They really do amazing work. So please contact them and they'll help. So the first thing I do is I need to create a new. Okay, there I am. Create number one, give it a name. Number two, upload video if you want. Number three, add slides. Number four, record. Number five, get feedback. It is so easy. If you have problems, just ask for feedback. They will help. Next, if you click on the image in the PowerPoint presentation that I shared, you should be able to get this. Okay, I created this. And notice what's here. You can share it on your uh, Gmail account. You can share it with all your social networks. You can get a copy of the link and share it with your students. And they can respond in the same way. And yes, thank you, Thomas. You can also import it into Moodle. Okay, so uh, next, this is what my account looks like. Okay, number one is archive. These are all the move notes that I have created so far. Number two, I create a new one by clicking on plus create. Very intuitive. Number three is about me, if you want to know, okay, if you want to add information about you. And all these are my move notes. Every time you click on a move note, you get this. Okay, so um, let's um, go back to screen sharing, if, that, if it will allow me. I'm not sure because I have to update my Java. No, it won't. It wants me to update my Java, so I don't think that it's going to work right now. 
Um, so I won't. In any case, okay, this is what your I archive will look like. Everything you've done is there. It's saved for you. Isn't that wonderful? Next, the settings at the top right. As I showed you where my name was, okay, number three. Okay, let's take a look at number three. If you click on number three, you get this. Isn't this wonderful? Look at this. Your name, you can change your password, your email address, and notice you have a signature. I love this part. And if you don't like it, in a lot of um, programs, you don't know how to disconnect yourself. Here you can remove your connection without any problems. Okay, so I think that's um, very, very important to be able to disconnect when you've had enough. And that's it. So let's begin. What would you like your students to be able to do? We're going to review. If you could just add that in the chat box. What would you like your students to be able to do? Oh, you do, Maria. Excellent. So maybe you can share it with us. We can become friends, too, on MoveNote. Okay, collaborate. Okay, so what are you going to do to get your students to collaborate? You will plan with MoveNote a way for your students to collaborate. Do you want to coll them to collaborate as a whole class? Do you want to divide them into groups? Do you want to have them uh, divide themselves into groups and then become teams? Okay, first we divide into groups and then they, because once they collaborate, they're going to be a team. It's up to them. Okay, great. So what you can do is you can get them to create the PowerPoint presentation, but it doesn't have to be only PowerPoint. It could be PDF or images. You can have them share images and then have them speak in English, if English is the language that you wish them to learn or the language that they use, or you can ask them to speak Polish. If you're a math teacher, you may want your students to work together, collaborate and create a move note of their homework, of what they've done, using not only math equations and so on, but also using audio. Polish and English, okay, so they can be translating. All right, so let's see, Neve says, uh, prepare me on a grammatic topic like to borrow and to lend. Okay, so you want your students maybe to bring examples. Um, okay, what would you like your students to do, to be able to do? Okay, this is a, a major question. You know, it's going down to the skeleton. What would you like your students to do? Okay, make their own video. Okay, make a video, but, and create the text with examples, with sentences, and maybe translate, or maybe have images that are connected to the borrow and lend. They can come up with the images. In other words, getting our students to teach us and learn, of course, uh, while they do. Okay, so did they do a presentation of their work? Exactly. And then present it and share it. See, they can share it with the world. And I love this about uh, MoveNote and a lot of these um, programs that they allow. You look at all the sharing down here. Uh, I think that's absolutely amazing. Look at this. Okay, and there's a plus here too, which means that they can share it not only with LinkedIn, Google+, Twitter, Facebook, and on MoveNote with other people, but they can also share it on Pinterest and Scoop It and their, their blogs in different places. I think they probably prefer Facebook. But it's a chance for them to feel ownership of what they did. Yes, yeah, sharing is great, of course, but working together too and not making them feel like they have to do this alone and then somebody will just do it for them, right? People cheat because they, they feel threatened. They, you know, they're afraid of 
of doing it on their own. But if you allow collaboration, then um, they won't have to feel like they're on their own. Okay, so what I'd like you to do um, is to create an assignment for your students. Okay, so the, the task is, and I'll put it on, um, on WizIQ, the task is to create, and you don't have to hurry up, you can do it at your leisure, but it's always good to do it now so you don't forget. Create a instructions for your students. Create instructions for your students, you, instructions for your students on what to do. And again, okay, you may want to use, uh, I don't like it, but you may want to use uh, Bloom's Taxonomy and use the words there, or you may want to use your words or the words that you know that your students will understand. Oh, they do. Okay, good, Helena. Those that prefer to do it on their own are encouraged to do it on their own, of course. Impaired students as well. That's right, because that's right. Some students who don't hear well will have a chance to be very visual with this. They can work together. Students who are, perhaps are deaf will have a chance to, uh, and, and students who are blind, of course, will be able to use, of course, all the senses. And it really does allow for um, students to feel empowered because they can contribute something to the team. So let's begin. Are you ready? Are you ready? Now, if you have any questions, I'm going to put this. Um, can somebody add the link to the core? I don't know if I have it here. I do. I do, actually. I, I always have everything ready. I do. I have it ready. Let me uh, share the link with you uh, for the course. OK, here's the link to uh, the course. And you'll find the assignment there. Okay, so here's the link. Uh, is everybody, has everybody joined? I'm not sure. Have you joined? What is the, oh, that's the, the, okay. That's a YouTube video. Oh, is that yours? That's your move note. That's great. Why would anybody want to laugh? Do you laugh at your student? You know, that's funny. Do you laugh at your students? Do you, no, I'm sure you don't. So why would anybody laugh at you? <laughs> right. That's funny that we think that anybody would laugh at us when we never laugh at our students. We only appreciate every single thing they do as if they were our own children, right? You laugh at yourself. Well, that's okay. You can laugh at yourself, but we're not going to do it. All right, so uh, let's take a look and see what Maria did. Okay, is everybody watching Maria? Oh, I love that. Bloom's Tax song. That's beautiful. That is so beautiful, Maria. But how come I'm not getting any sound? Oh, I'm getting sound now. That's great. That's great. I just listened to it. And notice that there's a reply. So everybody can reply to, um, and you can have them engaging socially. So everybody can reply. Oh, you can hear again? No, no, I think it's working. You can hear. Okay. All right. Yes. Good job. Good job. Excellent. All right. So that's your work. I'm looking forward to, uh, seeing it and if you have any questions feel free to use the course feed 
on WizIQ for questions and check out the courseware for, oops, for um, the content and for the live classes. How many of you are in Moodle for Teachers Evo? I should ask how many are not in Moodle for Teachers Evo. Anybody not in Moodle for Teachers Evo? Anybody not? You are. Yeah, good to see you, Didier. By the way, I remember everybody's names. <laughs> so um, I always remember. People think, well, she probably doesn't remember me, but I do. You don't know whether you are. Oh, Teresa. Well, Teresa, um, that's the link to the course. And maybe uh, somebody else can link you to the. No, it's not. It's not, Harriet. I was wondering why you didn't come. It's not for English teachers at all. There are teachers, even math teachers, a chemistry, a professor, a chemistry teacher. Uh, Thomas, what other teachers? I know there's chemistry, there's math, there's computers, there's economy uh, from higher education, from K-12. I don't even know if the, if the majority are English teachers. So, yeah, and we have over 1,000 right now on, on WizIQ, but I think on the Moodle there are 300 and almost 330. Yes, Neves, you should join us too. History as well. Ah, there we go. There's Andrea. There's history teachers, language, Portuguese teachers. Um, I'm trying to think of all the different um, content areas. Music, we have music as well. Uh, somebody who uh, has a business, um, a music school. And we just got started, exactly. Anybody have the link to the Moodle for Teachers Evo for 2014? Yeah, we only started on the 13th, and today is the 17th, so it's been four days, but that's okay. Uh, tomorrow we're going to have a live session. If you're interested in joining, everybody is welcome. And it's not on, there are some experienced Moodles, Harry, Moodlers, Harriet, and some are less experienced. They've never done any Moodle at all. And there are also uh, some who are super experienced, have been doing Moodle for years. So uh, it's a combination of everything. All right, so uh, I'm not going to keep you. You've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm looking forward to seeing your video, okay, and the work that you do on MoveNote. So thank you very much, everybody. Oh, I still don't know how to do move note with no video. What do you mean with no video? Oh, you mean, I see what you mean. You can um, add a, uh, a media. I think I showed it to you. Did I not? I'm not sure whether I showed it or not. You can actually add, yeah, here it is. You can just upload the video. You can find a video, a YouTube video or a video online and you can upload it. Some uh, YouTube videos uh, allow you to download them and then you can upload the video f to your computer and then upload it from your computer to um, MoveNote. You can also add big videos to Google Drive and then pull them <laughs> from Google Drive to your MoveNote. So actually it works quite well. So thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend and see you tomorrow. This will be on YouTube as well, by the way, without anybody's names. So thank you.